Hello, this is Brandon with RPG Overviews, and in this video, I'm going to be looking at the Fate Mill, a D20 to spark your imagination. And this was a product that was given to me by Tower House Creative to see what I thought about it. I told them I would definitely check it out, and then I told them I would do a video on it either way. And um, so they sent it to me, and uh, it is on Etsy, so if you want to get it, I'll have a link down in the description. And I'm going to tell you all the things you need to know about it. Everything you get, how this thing works. So, um, what is it for? And it says that it's great for RPGs, improv, uh, for writing, other yes-no questions. Of course, it would be great if you play solo. So, it says, whether ransacking a stale aired tomb, battling shrieking hordes of unspeakable horrors, or haggling over the price of grease-slicked stew, I like that one in particular, there is nothing more frustrating than breaking out of a scene because you've hit an impasse. The Fate Mill D20 helps you give the creative inspiration to push any scene forward in interesting and unexpected directions. Roll, your adventure awaits. So what do you get? You get one 35mm die, a D20. Look at the size difference. That's a normal D20. So this thing's absolutely massive, as you can see. Uh, you get a sticker, which is neat, and then a printed direction sheet, which we'll be going over, and then a setting story right here, which is neat, just give, give you a little bit of inspiration, maybe. So, you can use this as just a normal D20, if you want to clang this down on your table and say, oh, you've rolled a 12, and you've rolled a 6. You see how that works? It's a D20. It works like all the other ones, but man, I used to really like smaller dice, but now, for some reason, I really like big, chunky, big old things that just bash around on the table. Um, it's kind of like my Traveler dice that I got. Just big old things. That kaboom. They go down and make their presence uh, felt. And so let's go over and see how this thing works. So they've got a very easy uh, instructions here how it works. So the Fate Mail D20 is marked from 1 to 20. Just like a normal D20, right? And on number 1, it says no and and. And then uh, 20 says yes and and. That's how that works. So there it is right there. The number 20. The meaning rely on interpretation, house rules, and the question you ask. A good place to start is to take one as the worst result and 20 as the best. The add ends to the yes, no, or maybe, and the but presents an alternate path. It's important to note that no isn't always bad and yes isn't always good. For example, does the bandit have a knife? Of course, you want that to be no, possibly. Uh, yes, he may be able to stab you with it. So, um, if we go back up here, it says it helps you answer yes or no questions. Of course, that's going to be great for solo play. But then I'm thinking about this all the times I've run games, and there's been times where, uh, you know, a player asks me something. And I'll use the, the we're going to talk about the question. They give you an example here. Um, you know, is this like this? And I say yes. And then I think of that, and now looking at this die, it makes me realize, kind of going back in my head, I, I could have been, there could have been more to it to, to give the scene a little bit extra flavor to it. And this is where this die could have come in handy. So it says, the goal is to keep adventures moving and to provide on-the-spot inspiration. You'll have to decide how often you want to use the die. A sandbox, sandbox adventure might use it more, definitely so, while a pre-made one might use it less. When used enough, the D20 may pull, put your adventure on a bizarre path or reveal unexpected secrets. So again, roll your adventure away. So here's an example. Below is an example of how a question might resolve depending on the result. The roll result. Question, can I see anything down the hallway? And then what I really like is it gives you all 20 of the uh, of the, the rolls here, but some of them are the same. So like we've got 2, 3, and 4 say the same, which is good. It's good to have some that kind of lock in some uh, answers to the question. So if we roll a 1, let's try to find it on this big boy. And I like the color of the die. I like the font that's on it. And... Let's see how long it can take me to find this one. There it is. No and and. So can I see anything down the hallway? No and and. No, the hallway is dark and you don't hear anything and you can't see an easy way forward. I like that. That's very easy. Let's just go ahead and roll it and see what we get. Eight. Okay. Eight. We go down here. It says no, the hallway is dark, but you can smell something. So one thing to say about this is that while this does help you, you have to you have to fill in the ands and the buts, all right? That's going to be the challenging part that's going to hopefully uh, make you stop and think a little bit because you're going to roll this die and then say yes and. So yes and, 19, yes. You see a thin light in, in the outline of a door at the end of the hallway and you hear low voices in hurried conversation, maybe helping you get the jump on some sort of 
UFO that's behind that door. So you can see where rolling higher is better. And I just want to say again, with the light in this thing, I really, really like the color of this die. I like purple. It's one of my favorite colors. Uh, so it really, I'm really pleased with that. So if we go to 20, yes, you see a thin light in the outline of a door at the end of the hallway, and you hear low voices in hurried conversation, and it looks like there is a clear path to a hiding place. So that's where this thing is just going to be great for helping you kind of fill in and be a little bit more creative about your answers. And of course, if you're playing something solo, you say, okay, you're doing a hex crawl or something. Um, you want to find out if this hex, maybe does it have a set like a settlement or a city or something? Yes, but, so I can say they do have a settlement, but they don't like outsiders or they're, um, they're very religious and they don't let anyone without their religious belief uh, gain entrance into their town. So, you know, you're going to have to really kind of use that DM, game master type of headspace to fill out these questions. I guess I could say the questions, the ands and the buts. So I like this right here, number five, no, just period, point blank, no, the hallway is, hallway is dark. Now, the back side has got a little advertisement for Bell Whispers, something coming soon. It's going to be a zine. Um, adventure starters, infinite door, dungeon generator, and five D100 tables. That's a lot. Uh, I tell you, D100 tables are no joke to make. I know I've said that in another video. So the only thing I would say, this is, of course, it's its own unique die. There's the size difference. This is what you get. It is 25 bucks, but that, you know, that could be a sticking point for some people. But this is a really cool idea, and one I'm certain I could have used. Now, I will push back on uh, Tower House Creative and tell them what I would love to see. You've got this question, can I see anything down the hallway? But what if we had a PDF or even a little book full of questions to use this with to help people on you know, even more? You, some sort of index, some sort of way of traversing it so you can get what you want. You know, it could be sights, smells, all sorts of things with the senses. Um, it could be about cities. It could be about a water, like, a you know, some sort of body of water you come across. Maybe it's food you're about to eat. You could make a whole book with some cool art and just question after question after question that somebody could quickly use in case they don't really have that type of creative uh, thinking fast on their feet um, improv that you need for this die. So uh, I do appreciate them sending it to me. I think it's very neat. I could use this. I will be using this. Um, I, <laughs> again, I love how this thing just bashes across the table. So uh, number 11 is maybe. So uh, maybe you aren't in a good position to tell. That's four when can you see anything down the hallway. Uh, Twelve is maybe. You can tell something was there and it seems to have gone down the hallway. So again, I'd love to see a book or some sort of product that had a bunch of different questions. Just to see what maybe people could come up with or to help people along with their uh, fate meal adventures. So... There it is. If you want to check this out, pick it up. Um, I'll have a link down in the description in case you want to read some reviews and stuff about it. Um, see how you know this would be in your game, and uh, you can tell take a difference. See the difference between this version and the because there are some pictures of the one they made before, and you'll see how great this big chunky meat. And this is just I, I looked picked this thing up, and I was like, God dang, is that really the size of a D20? It's t it's tiny, but this thing comes along and just overshadows this guy. Boom, get out of here. It says. So there it is. There's the Fate Mail D20. Check it out. See if this is right for you. I know there's a lot of people playing solo role playing. It seems like this would be absolutely great for that. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks.